please raise those palms. This is the day, hard as that is to imagine for perhaps many of us that we are this far in the new year. We begin on the front of the Celebrate insert. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When they had come near Jerusalem and had re reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and they put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of Jesus and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through, your, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and we who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. We, uh, at this time, will sing together the beloved Palm Sunday hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. Again this year, we'll be treated to a bit of a prelude slash introduction by Judy. Uh, at the end of that, you'll hear that she changes gears a bit and plays through the first verse of the hymn, at which point then we all will come in. So over to Judy. <laughs>
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and uh, just a reminder about staying seated during the Passion Gospel reading today. We've gotten kind of used to that with these lengthy Gospels the past few weeks, but what will happen is after Olivia reads the second lesson, we'll sing the Gospel acclamation as normal, we'll simply stay seated at that time, and then we'll go right into the Passion Gospel reading at that time. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. Let's read responsibly Psalm 31, verses 9 to 16. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my ears with sorrow. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like the dead, I am forgotten, I am not. I am as useless as a broken For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, my times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your The second reading is from Philippians chapter 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though was, he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found human, in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew.
one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, what will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord, surely not I. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymns, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here 
while I go there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into this time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then? Would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him as, at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so that they might put him to death, but they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, at least two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it up in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. And the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, 
Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him. And she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know this man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly, certainly, you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And so he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, oh, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went out and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used the silver to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this very day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the 30 pieces of silver the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set the price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded. Now, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, 
you say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to releasing a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to him, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, his blood be on us and on our children. And so he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, hail, king of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away. They led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down right there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, <laughs> He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now. Oh, and then we'll believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, 
This man is calling for Elijah. At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks were split, the tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly, truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. He said, After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, Command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go. Make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone.
Before we go any further, I want to say another big thank you this year to Vincent Lamenza for his reading of the Passion Gospel this year according to Matthew. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent. Well done, as always, these many years. Um, we have a number of things for you to take along with you today. Uh, besides, we pray, the, the inspiration, the fire of uh, Jesus' real presence with us in word and sacrament. But in the way of tangible things, we have back in the back, and I'm looking at them, and I see we still have quite a bunch of palms that are there for the taking. It's always one of those situations that if we went with the smaller bunch, we would be skimping. But of course, the next step up is one where you have a lot of extra, typically. Um, we have no use for them. And so truly, uh, I'm not exaggerating when I say that I would love to look back there when we're finished with worship today and see that they're all gone. So if you want to take a handful along, if there are folks to whom you'd like to take them and share them, please do that. If you'd like a bunch, maybe just to decorate your home on this Palm Passion Sunday, again, please do take them. That is uh, what they're there for. Similarly, on the windowsills here toward the front, there are several flower arrangements which come to us from the wedding of Kayla Henry and Dan Eiler yesterday. Uh, we have uh, proud parents present with us and siblings up there uh, the day after we had the chance to celebrate that great day. But they have brought along these flowers from yesterday once again for the taking. And we really mean that because if they aren't taken, then that still lets them needing to find good homes for them. So if you have any inclination at all, and they are very lovely, as you'll see if you look more closely, a great centerpiece on a table, uh, please, please feel free to take along one of those uh, wedding flower arrangements and, and enjoy them um, with uh, our thanks to the Henrys for sharing those. Uh, in the back, less nice perhaps than that. Uh, we also have uh, still two shirts, St. John shirts. They're uh, t-shirts. Uh, you'll see the, the sizes on the collars. If you have uh, been thinking it would be nice to have one uh, and you see a size there that would match up with the need that you have, please, please take one or both along. Again, we really want to get those out to homes where they will be enjoyed and appreciated. So those are on the table back there. And um, in addition, there's something I'm missing. Oh, I know. Um, we also have everything you ever wanted to know about Arkansas. And uh, these were dropped off by Susan Dawson, Susan Crabb Dawson, uh, who lives in Arkansas. They were downstairs. Uh, and there's seriously a lot of great tourism information, a map. So if you are either a traveler, maybe thinking you might get down that way, or maybe an armchair traveler and or a map person, those are back there, and again, they are there for the taking. So anyone who has any inclination to do so, please be sure to pick those up. Uh, this is the quarterly Sunday, so enough, those are the good things we have for you, please take. Um, it's also the time, once every couple of months, when I try to just lift up for our knowing emergency things that are here uh, in case we should experience some emergency of some kind. Back on the table where we get the bulletins and where you hopefully are going to pick up lots of palms and shirts after worship, we have our automatic external defibrillator. Uh, that, of course, is there, as you probably all of us know by now what that does. In the event of some kind of cardiac emergency, it is always there keeping watch ready to go if, God forbid, we would ever have a need for it. Likewise, there is a very well-stocked first aid kit for most any other kind of emergency, bleeding things, and so forth. Should we have a fire, again, God forbid, um, we have two fire extinguishers close at hand. One is in the closet right back there. There's a large symbol on the door that says fire extinguisher here. The other one is right here around the corner. And so those are there and available if we would have an emergency need for them. But more importantly, in the case of a fire, where perhaps the regular steps were not uh, suitable to use, of course, needless to say, the elevator, that's never a good idea in that kind of emergency. We have a fire escape. 
And I'm guessing by now all of you sitting here this morning are probably thinking, yeah, I know about that. Just in case, though, because if you're like me, things you know, have a way for me of going right over my head. Right around the corner where there used to be a window corresponding to that one on the south side, there is instead an emergency door. It has a crash bar. You just push it and go. And when you do, you find yourself on a probably surprisingly high perch at that point because you're both up at a pretty good level on the building and we are the Hill Church. And so you have quite a bit of elevation. And so I'm not exaggerating when I say that if you, you know, are a little shaky with heights, you may want to sometime literally take a look at that. And it's as simple as taking a walk up here. There's nothing irreverent about that in any fashion. Up the steps, around the corner, push open the door, and you'll get a sense of the emergency steps and uh, the facility there that would give us another out in the event that the steps back there were not able to be used. So again, I mention those things so that like bringing your umbrella on a rainy day, of course, then it doesn't rain. So it is here, but it is stuff that we all want to be aware of. And, and truly, truly, going forward doesn't need to be today, but sometime when you find yourself here with a moment, if you never have, Take a look at that emergency exit, and then, you know, it's just tucked away. It's in mind for something that we pray we would never need. Looking at the week ahead then, schedule-wise, Tuesday, I do plan to be taking my day off that would normally fall next Saturday on Holy Saturday, so I don't plan to be in the office on Tuesday as I normally would be, but I will then be back in on Wednesday. Wednesday evening is both Celebration Club with Miss Laurie, that's in the evening at 6.30. 7 o'clock is choir rehearsal and also preparation with some altar guild folks for our Maundy Thursday worship. So no choir rehearsal on Tuesday. Instead, that is 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening. There is a whole lot of worship that starts then on Thursday evening, the triduum as it's called, the three days of continuing worship that begin with Maundy Thursday evening and run all the way until Easter Sunday morning. The details for that are in the bulletin as well as in my letter in the newsletter. No need to go over those once again. I would simply lift up in the midst of the triduum the Easter egg hunt taking place on Saturday morning. Again, the details are in the bulletin. Uh, we look forward to having a lot of excited young persons coming out to join us here for our egg hunt, lots of times before making their way across the way to Barrysburg for the hunt there. Uh, following next Sunday, there is the note in the bulletin about the uh, family evening at the Colonnade, uh, the movie. I'll let you to read those details for yourself. The deadline is approaching for spring Bible study to let me know of your interest in the study. Again, talked about in detail in the bulletin. Please just speak with me if you would no later than the end of day this coming Maundy Thursday. I wanted to lift up our collection for the food pantry at the Upper Dauphin Human Services Center in Lycans. Uh, that is going on the same as always but it is taking place in a new uh, setup because of our Restoration 250 work. And as noted in the bulletin, those food items go in the closet downstairs to the left of the exit as you're heading out, or if you're compass-minded, that would be to the north side of the exit doors. Uh, right inside the closet, lots of shelf space for those non-perishable items. And it has slowed up a bit, which may well be a case of, you know, out of sight, it starts to get a little bit out of mind. So because we don't have the things kind of piled right there, which is a good thing from an appearance standpoint, we don't want to lose sight of the fact, the most important thing, that we continue to do that collecting. So uh, just commending that to your, your kind attention. Lastly, in our prayer list on the very back page of the insert with the announcements, I wanted to lift up Judy Cheatham, um, who has, for this very, very long time now, continued to be a resident at a facility in Annapolis, Maryland. And uh, you may perhaps have been there. If you haven't, it's a bit of a jaunt. Uh, it is on the far side of Baltimore, which in itself is a bit of a jaunt. And uh, so as she has continued to be far away from family and 
home and friends. Uh, we want to continue to lift her up, particularly in that just this past week she underwent an outpatient procedure for which she's now back, back in her room again um, on the mend, but having some pain from that. She did ask me to please share with you how much she has appreciated your cards. So it, it's, I'm not in any way saying that you've lost track of our sister Judy, not at all, uh, but it has been a long haul and she again asked me to express her great thanks for the cards that she receives and if you would please update your prayers uh, accordingly as she is now on the mend from that procedure and still looking, still working to end up somewhere back in the Harrisburg area again, but as yet how that will be remains to be seen. So I'll ask you to take a look please at the other announcements in the bulletin at your convenience. And if you would please stand if able, we're going to turn to the words of the Nicene Creed this festival day. That is page 104 in the very front part of the worship book. Let's please join together in those words. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And now sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and for all of creation. Save your church, O God, enable us to boldly confess in every time and place that Jesus Christ is Lord. With the humility of a servant, equip congregations, synods, and other ministry settings to proclaim your extravagant love for all. We pray this day in particular that you would bless our bishops, Elizabeth and James. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Save your creation, O God. Every living being you have made has purpose. Give us renewed appreciation of farm animals who labor in the fields, service animals who accompany their human companions, and beloved pets who live alongside us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Save the dignity of the peoples of the earth, O God. Restore that dignity to those who were scorned and persecuted for their religious beliefs, or political activism. Deliver them from the hand of their enemies. Bring peace to those places of which there are many where conflict runs deep. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Save those who cry to you in any need, O God. Watch over all who are incarcerated or awaiting trial. Stand with those who are unjustly accused. Be present with those feeling isolated, lonely, or fearful for any reason. We lift up this day particularly Cindy and Judy and Timothy and Jane and Cora and Joyce and these persons we now call by name before you, O oh God. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Save us in your love, O oh God. Guide the work of church musicians, pastors, choirs, readers, deacons, technicians, acolytes, all who assist in worship in any way. Sustain them in their leadership as we together go through this holy week. 
merciful God, receive our prayer. Save us at the last, O God. We give you thanks for your saints of old who embodied your servant love. As you came to their aid, so deliver us in times of trial, that every knee would bend in praise to you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated at this time as the senior choir comes forth.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy and great as the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again. We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Jesus may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. And you may be seated at this time.
Uh, if you would please go ahead and stand, if able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you refresh us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless us now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be, we will. Thanks be to God.